Hello, hello. Hoping everyone's doing well so far. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of stretching um, this particular fall. This is fall, but this particular season has been a lot of sitting, and I've been also noticing a lot of clients just either whether you're driving long distances or you're just sitting in a in either um, a machine or sitting at a desk. I find that there's just such a, a buildup that occurs within the body that can really have pretty harsh um, or pretty pretty debilitating side effects. Uh, a lot of my clients that come in and see me, a, a big part of what they're kind of trying to overcome is tightness, uh, you know, tight muscles in the hips, along the sides of the legs, not getting enough circulation in the shoulders, the arms, the forearms, and um, and just just feeling like really heavy in, in those areas. So today we're just going to kind of work on those areas. So grab some water. Uh, I've got my little special morning drink here. Mm. And then let's get started. So to begin with, um, I'm going to, and again, I'm kind of just utilizing this chair. Um, it's solid. Make sure that whatever you are sitting on, it's kind of solid. This is something, the goal is that this can be something that you do in the desk, in the office. Um, if you are driving and you're pulling over to the side, it just, there's stretches that you can kind of utilize the space around you and utilize the chair or whatever you're sitting in. Um, to be able to kind of stretch it out throughout the day. One of the most important goals of, of creating a, a physical body and, and giving the muscles and giving everything a chance to really open and really begin to find that balance is, is consistency. Consistency doesn't mean that it has to be for an hour yoga class or an hour chunk of time or even half an hour, 20 minutes. You know, even five minutes broken up throughout the day can really allow that consistency to not only create strength, if that's what your goals are, or to create um, space and, and, and release within tight areas in the body, for instance, like the shoulders, the neck, the hips, those tend to be some really common areas for a lot of us. Um, and, and yeah, it's just consistent, consistency and trying to do it throughout the day. So um, whatever the case may be, we're going to be kind of working into an area in the hips to begin with. And again, remember when you're doing these stretches, you're not trying to go in and go 110% right off the bat. You really want to make sure that you're just kind of feeling the stretch. You're not going into your max capabilities or your max flexibility. So to begin with, we just allow ourselves to get right to the edge of the chair. We're going to bring in again near image, but we're going to bring the left leg, left foot, bring one foot up onto whatever feels comfortable for you. So my opposite leg is nice and firmly in contact with the floor. My left ankle is resting comfortably on my right leg. Now, if for some of you, even just getting that foot up there feels that's that is really, really tight completely understand what you can do is you can get another chair that you just place slightly in front of you if you have that again right I'm trying to work with if you were in a in a car or if you were possibly in some type of machine that you've been working in every day um, as well as a, as well as an office but I guess in this particular case you would want to have something that was kind of ever so slightly in front so it's not coming up onto your quad or up onto your other leg it's just kind of sitting slightly in front of you so it's not quite so intense of a stretch. Either case, if you can get it up and you can allow that foot to rest comfortably. Um, I know I have quite a bit of ankle injuries, um, lots and lots of soccer when I was younger. Uh, it's just created just injuries that occur. So I find that I like to have my ankle ever so slightly off my quad. Other people you might choose to just actually have that ankle or foot resting on top of that leg. So again, wherever feels comfortable for you, just allowing this foot to come up and then just really being mindful of your posture. So finding again, those sit bones lengthening through the spine. And then from here, it's, it's incredible how simple and easy. And again, you might already do some of these poses or some of these pieces, or you may not have even kind of explored what it is to be in a semi-sitting position in a fairly small space. 
and just being able to having that put up onto your knee, just beginning to lean forward. Now, a big part of the stretching is, again, just leaning into wherever there happens to be some tension or tightness. And you just want to kind of explore where that tension and tightness is coming from. So giving examples of my own physical uh, body is I'm feeling a lot in and around into my glutes and, and kind of wrapping around into my lower back. So for my areas, that makes sense to me. And because I have also been doing lots of computer work, um, you know, it just, after a certain period of time, I try to keep my posture very, very strong and activated, yet our minds sometimes, they get focused on other things and our posture starts to diminish, sometimes drastically. So as I lean forward and I just kind of, and you can notice I'm rocking a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, I'm really searching out and I'm really kind of feeling out where my body needs to hold itself for, for maybe a few breaths. And at this stage, I'm feeling like it's right here, finding that particular sweet spot. And I'm just going to kind of allow myself to kind of lean in and take about four or five breaths, seeing if I can just hold this position and giving the body, so the reason we hold is we're just giving the body the opportunity to be able to let go, to be able to release if it's ready to release, reminding, and, it, and here's a reminder from for myself as well as for you, um, sometimes your body is holding on for a reason, and, and that means it's not ready to let go. So again, reiterating, do not force your body, do not force a stretch. If it's beyond something that feels like a stretch, but it's going into a place that feels uncomfortable. We never ever, and I want to really state that, um, we never ever want to force our body to do something. It, it, it may, your body may be different than mine. It may <laughs> um, choose to respond and it may choose to let go, but ultimately you're going to be making these little micro microfiber kind of tears in your muscles and and in not a good way there's there's the developing way when you're developing muscle tissue and building muscle and then there's the other one where you're you're over stretching and you're overdoing the benefit and going past that that mark and and going into more harm more you're, you're doing harm to those muscles and the only person that will be able to know if that is the case is yourself so really taking that empowered stance of you know being in a in a yoga class and being having a yoga instructor there in person is a beautiful benefit love it however even within that scenario you are always wanting to feel like you know your body best if something doesn't feel right or if you're getting into it and it's it's for any reason, emotional, physical, mental, any of those pieces um, is telling you to either modify or telling you to come out completely. I'm a big fan as a teacher, as, a, as an empowering coach, uh, a connections facilitator. It's, it's important to me that students or, or clients always, and I mean that, always feel that ultimately they are connecting to themselves and they are connecting to their body and if something doesn't feel right, they are going to modify and change it. I need to trust that in order to be able to help. So as we're holding here, I'm starting to feel like, ooh, there's some heat coming out from around that lower back, which is a positive sign. That usually means that my body's kind of beginning to let things go. As I've been talking, I'm just going to focus on my breath here. Now, as I come out of this one, I want to come out and I want to just kind of allow myself to come out slow because it's fascinating as we come out of postures, there's lots of little micro postures coming out of it as well. So as we come into a kind of more starting position, I'm going to hold here and if it feels comfortable for you, keep that ankle where it is. And I'm going to simply, so again, mirror image, but that left ankle opposite hand which would be my right hand is going to grab onto the ankle bottom of the foot maybe onto the calf or even the knee depending on what feels comfortable what feels solid for you and I'm just going to hold on to that foot and I'm just going to do a little gentle twist to one direction and then I'm going to modify my hands I'm going to use the chair that I have which has this wonderful solid back 
and I'm just going to twist in the other direction. And as we come back to center, once we're here, just going to allow that knee to bounce a couple of times, allow the hip joint to get an opportunity to let go. And again, just these little tiny movements, these little tiny shifts and readjustments in the body. Sometimes you can get some actual like, um, like chiropractic type adjustments. So you'll get these little clicks and creaks and then sometimes these like kakunks where something actually adjusts itself back to where it needs to go. A really beautiful piece that I have found over 20 years of teaching is that our bodies will not adjust if they're not ready. And, um, and that does change like if you're going to a chiropractic session, they will get things to go whether the body's ready or not. And again, that can just be depending on, on um, the nervous system and how your body uh, responds to that type of, um, of treatment. And uh, either way, when you are and when the body is ready to let go, it is a fantastic benefit of being able to do this type of stretching, this type of work, this type of intuitive um, release therapy, because it really, you know, things sink in. Your body allows that adjustment to really solidify in a deeper, really solid way, hopefully not coming back out again, unless, of course, the activities and the daily things that we do. So as we hold here, I think we're going to take a little bit of a break on this side and switch to the other side. So very gently, again, when we come out of these poses, you will be surprised how much your body will feel different as we come out of the stretch. So being so gentle, so aware with yourself. When you release this foot, once again, I'll say this a lot, but you want to go slowly out of it. So you're going to activate this foot that's on your knee or on your leg that's bent. And you're just going to slowly lift it up and extend that leg. So extend through the knee, bend through the knee, pull it back up towards you. And as you hold, you might even choose to draw that knee straight up and pull it in nice and tight towards the chest. So elbows are tucked in nice and tight to the ribs. Shoulders are drawn down and away from the ears. And you're really squeezing and pulling that knee in towards the chest. You might draw it ever so slightly out to the side body, which is just gonna, again, you're creating these little micro massages into those hip joints. And it's fantastic. It's just a really great way of, um, especially if you're joining me live here, it's a really great way to start to wake up um, the digestive system for the day. If you haven't had your breakfast, maybe you've just had your, having my special drink or your coffee. And so if you can hear that, so my hip just made a pretty solid adjustment. So again, it's just one of those components when it's ready to let go, it will. Okay, bringing both legs back down, reshift. Always important to readjust, find those beautiful sit bones. And again, we all need to grab hold of the fleshy part of our glutes of our, of our bum and we're going to pull those muscles away from the sit bones. That allows us to find that solidified, solidified connection point between the actual sit bones, which is a bone in your glutes, but your glute muscles are around those bones. And sometimes it's not always the case, but a lot of the time, um, if, if you're not finding the bones and you're kind of getting, coming into a solid structure, you're just going, it's going to happen automatically. You're going to automatically kind of shift and roll because you're not sitting on something that is foundational. Those bones create the foundation, the vertebrae, the spine, which connects slightly underneath and goes up and then through our actual spine up to the, up to the base of the skull, is also stacking itself in the way that it needs to, to be strengthening. So our spine isn't straight up and down, thank goodness, because we would feel so much compression, we would get so much pain. There, the, the way the spine is shaped is literally for the benefit of us and being able to move in all sorts of different ways. It creates a very um, similar kind of almost spring action, not in that quite that sense, but the, the thought is there, it's along the same lines. So right foot, when you're ready, bring that right foot up. Placing it again on your left knee or your left thigh. If this is too much of a stretch or too much on this side, once again, you can place a chair out in front or you can adjust whatever feels comfortable for you and just finding where that ankle can kind of go. So you can maybe feel a few things, but it feels semi-comfortable. And again, if it just, it's already feeling like a lot here, 
This might just be where you are in the stretch and that's okay too. Once you're here, I want you again, just to kind of notice where the spine is really extending and elongating through the spine. And it's just a very subtle shift. So I personally, I really enjoy grabbing hold and just noticing where certain parts of my body are so I can feel that they're solid. And I almost use them as a little bit of traction as well. So as I pull forward, I elongate through the spine and I come forward ever so slowly. This is definitely a little bit of a tighter side. So as I come forward, I'm already noticing that that stretch, that not super deep, not going all the way into my flexibility, but I can already begin to feel some areas highlighting. This side is definitely more in my glutes and working down the side of my leg. So again, being so unique, so different from one side to the other. But as I hold here, I, again, I'm just gonna kind of shift and explore. Explore to the left and explore to the right. And as we're exploring, I'm just encouraging you to find those extra sweet spots. On this side, if I'm being honest, it's all kind of a little bit of a just a big sweet spot. There's quite a bit of tension and it's, it's uh, I'm breathing, which is important because if I wasn't, it would be taking my breath away a little bit. There is, there is some good stuff. So that's, again, just collecting information. It's nothing, nothing that I'm being hard on myself about, but it's definitely recognizing that I'm very likely crossing my legs on this side so that's causing a lot more strain on this hip and or I'm just a lot of the time when we sit it's a habit to kind of shift our body especially when we're when we're working for long periods of time so what's most likely happening is I'm kind of shifting and kind of collapsing into this side so I'm just going to be paying attention as I'm at the computer today noticing okay that right side is really needing a little bit of extra TLC a little bit of extra awareness so I might be doing this stretch probably four or five, six times, even if it is just a minute or two minutes on both sides. And again, as you're here, we'll take about another three or four breaths. I encourage you, so I'm not doing a whole lot of movement because it's really tight, but I encourage you just to kind of move your body around, move your body in any way that you need to, to kind of get into those extra sweet spots. And breathe. Last breath, take a nice full deep breath in. Now again, when you come out of these ones, you just gotta come out nice and slow because you'd be surprised. So as I come forward, I kind of push a little bit and I know this side has got quite a few little, little areas. So even as I begin to sit forward, sorry, as I begin to sit up, I just, I am noticing so much pulling through my back. So I'm just going to kind of, as I come into a almost upright, starting position. I'm just going to kind of lean to one side and give that area that I'm feeling is really, really tight, just the opportunity to kind of stretch and release. And we will be going into some side stretches here in a bit, but this is just what my body's asking for. And then once again, when you're ready, coming all the way back up to center, keeping the feet, keeping the position exactly how it is. And again, when you're ready to do so, you're just gonna grab onto the opposite ankle, or we can grab onto the knee, whichever side you wanna to rotate to. I'm gonna grab onto my ankle with my opposite hand, and I'm just gonna allow myself to rotate using the chair, using whatever area you have. As you rotate though, make sure you're not rotating and collapsing through the abdomen and the spine. You're staying nice and strong, you're opening through the chest, and you're guiding yourself, you're leading with the sternum, you're leading with the chest as you go through that twist. Then the eyes follow. And then you're coming back to center and you're switching to the other direction. And again, just finding out what it is and what, what 
guess you want to call it what what components you have to grip hold of everyone's position everyone's area like I said this is something where if you're in a desk job if you are driving long long periods of time um, if you're you've just been noticing that you're sitting a lot um, this can just be okay I, I need to be working at my desk but this can be a couple of things that I can do throughout my day you know you can be taking those little two three minute breaks on both sides and just really allowing your body to kind of come back to a neutral position or at the very least allowing the body to find those little sweet spots and beginning to let them go as I come back to center we're just going to kind of hold here readjust notice how the spine is feeling and then very very slowly beginning to release that ankle letting it come down nice and slow and then once again from here just kind of creating a little bit of movement movement in the hips movement in that leg that we just worked so again allowing it to kind of go from the side to the side and then right away bringing that again that same leg that we just worked on pulling it in nice and tight so you interlace the fingers nice tight grip all the way to the webbing Get it in, around the knee or even behind the knee if that feels more comfortable. Elbows are tucked in tight towards the ribs and you're really pulling in. Shoulders are away from the ears. Elbows are tucked in tight and you squeeze, 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 squeeze. You will feel a little bit of pressure or sometimes a lot of pressure and it might be in the hip or it might be in even the digestive. This is a really great self massage for that internal organ area. So again, the more you pull, the more you squeeze, the more benefit there is. And, and if there is, of course, too much, you just don't pull quite as hard. As you hold here, I'm just kind of rolling out the ankle. That's feeling comfortable. That feels good for me right now. And then release once again. Now our side stretch that we're gonna do, side stretch is such a valuable and, and I feel sometimes very overlooked um, stretch and whether it can feel very uncomfortable for some or they just don't feel like maybe they are doing it right or um, like they need more support, which I can understand all the above, yet side stretching because when we're in a sitting position for long periods of time, when we sit, compression is going to happen. Like I said, we get ourselves into these weird, when we're working, we're getting into these weird kind of postures. And, um, and so that's just, it's, it is, it's kind of compressing, compressing through the spine, but it's also compressing through our ribs. Our ribs, in order to expand our breathing, in order to breathe properly, quote unquote, um, our lungs need space. Our lungs are supposed to be moving with each and every inhale and exhale. And when they don't, they literally like other parts of our body, the um, intercostal muscles, so the muscles, if this was your ribs, the intercostal muscles that are connected in between the ribs kind of pull the ribs in and, and literally can sometimes to the point get so tight that they're actually pulling vertebrae out through the back in the spine or the actual ribs themselves are going slightly off and they're, they're not situating themselves in a way creating and it does create and can create quite a bit of uncomfortable sensations. So the intercostal muscles should be moving every time we inhale and exhale and when that's not occurring it is it, it affects a lot around it affects a lot of the muscles and a lot of the um, bone structure in our body. So side bends will help to counteract that and they will help to balance that component out. So this is a really important one and I want to as, as an instructor and as again an empowerment coach, okay, I want to connect you. I want to allow you to feel your physical body and never go in beyond what it's telling you, what it's asking and requiring you to do. So what shape my body takes, what shape your body takes, it's going to be two unique and very different things. So when we come into side bending, that's, that's, that's just going to be a component of it as well. So again, just using the chair, using the environment that we have, if we're, if we're working on a chair, working at a desk or we're driving or um, like I said, working in, a, in, a, in an equipment, heavy equipment operator, you just want to try to find a side bend, any kind of position where you can, you can modify, you don't have to have the arm straight up, you can have the elbow bent, but as you come into your side bend, you want to really allow once again, the elongating of the spine helps to keep everything nice and structured so you're not collapsing and creating 
more tension or tightness. You're elongating, which is already creating a lot of openness. And then you're just simply allowing the weight of that arm to come up and over. And you can kind of come forward. So you'll, you'll notice that my arm looks past my tricep. And I'm kind of looking up towards the ceiling. Notice what happens with this hand. I grab a hold of the opposite leg and it just helps me to come into a little bit more of an opening through the ribs all the way around coming up into that arm. It's a wonderful stretch for circulation into the arms, into that area in the, in the side body. And again, you don't have to hold there for very long. You come out of it, you roll out the ankle. Oh my goodness, it's early folks. You will roll out the shoulder and you just kind of move the body. And we're going to do this a couple of times to each side because each and every time you come into some of these side bends holding for just a breath or two, it's fascinating how much your body lets go. It's kind of going the first time it's going, oh, I don't know what's going on. Second time it's like, oh, okay, we're letting go third, fourth, and continuous times. It, it usually does tend to let go fairly quickly once it understands it doesn't have to be in a protective stance or a protective state. So as we switch to the other side, once again, nice and tall. Arm can reach up, you can bend, you know, just allow yourself to get creative in the space that you are. And then don't collapse forward. Um, when I'm telling you to kind of like lean in, it's always elongate first, so nice and tall through the spine, come into the stretch so you feel, so you start to feel something, and then begin to make these little micro movements. Then begin to allow yourself to feel where your body wants to go. Make sure your feet are nice and solid on the floor. Make sure your sit bones are still connected, but then you can really allow that upper body, that shape to come forward, come back, open. Okay, so again, opening my eyes up or open out or do the opposite and stretch and go into more of the back body. I think so many times that um, I've had students or clients say that they didn't feel comfortable doing a stretch. They knew they needed to, they knew and they could almost feel their body wanting to, and yet they prevented themselves from going into a stretch or even playing with a stretch because they felt like they didn't have the knowledge or, or, or base, knowledge base to go into a stretch like safely. And, and that, that statement has been said to me so many times over the years. And every time, I mean, I, I understand, but it's, it, represents to me kind of um, well this obvious communication that that instead of communicating um, you can go into any shape it is your body uh, your body will communicate your body is always communicating what its needs are and to trust that once you trust that and you form this actually it's it's a very beautiful bond that you form over time and just continuous kind of tuning in and listening which takes a little bit of practice I suppose we've had it and we've always had it it's always been there yet yes I understand that life and sometimes our mind um, tends to just it doesn't connect as much so when we're going into the physical when you're really connecting to the physical and you're doing a stretch and you're like I don't want to do that one because as soon as that story starts to take a, a hold or a place in your mind Really be curious of where that's coming from and and feel out if that is actually truth, your truth, because I'm going to say this and I will say it often with the intention of opening up space to allow you to play with poses. That means that you're not going in hardcore, you're not going in with the intention of you know, getting the very deepest into the stretch and finding some shape that is crazy pants. You are going in with the intention of, I, I'm tight, I can feel pain coming up and I'm starting to notice I'm, I'm collecting chronic pain in my body. That is a really clear sign that your body is, is craving and needing and asking for some, some movement. It, it is asking for you to create some space. And, and only you can do that. So that, that opportunity, that empowerment, that, okay, side stretches, even back bends, there are, yes, some pieces that you want to be mindful of, yet you are, you are able to move your body. We are literally able to move in all different directions in all different ways for a reason. When you go into these side to side, so I'm just going to kind of do another little um, piece that I do throughout my day when I'm doing desk work. 
um, I just do these little shifts from side to side. And what I visualize is I visualize my rib cage just kind of leading this movement. And this movement, simple as it is, it tends to really expand through this whole, everything from my hips all the way up into my ribs and into that kind of middle back, that area where your shoulder blades get really, really tight. I, again, I've been doing massage for you know, over 20 years and, and, and this area in all of my clients is so tight in between the shoulder blades area, kind of that mid, mid thoracic, that middle back. And this movement where it's just like a very small shift from side to side and sometimes I'll shift and then I'll rotate to the front and I'll rotate to the back and then I'll go to the other side, rotate to the front, rotate to the back. These are micro movements, but it's so incredibly powerful how much it strengthens my spine. It strengthens my core muscles. It strengthens and it begins to release that kind of that tension when I can't get that tight spot in between my shoulder blades to let go. I do that movement kind of continuously throughout a day or two and all of a sudden I recognize and I realize oh okay finally my shoulders my shoulder blades are starting to let go there's some balance there again okay so I'm going to kind of leave it on that today we're starting to kind of work into and beyond um, lots and lots here and I'll do more more chair stretching because I do feel like it's important and and it's also it's a great opportunity for just you know, whatever and wherever you happen to be in your in your life. It, you can be doing this obviously on the floor as well, but I just was using and utilizing the chair. So you can really see that a lot of these stretches you can do in an office space. You can do while you're driving, obviously not actually driving, but pulled off to the side and, and or in, in some type of um, sitting position throughout the day. So I hope you enjoyed and uh, talk to you next week. Have a great weekend.